Thank you all for coming today. I'm really excited about this sold out crowd here at Strata. So um, Alistair mentioned a lot of things I've done, but really a lot of the things that I've done, it's all been about technology and uh, the excitement, my excitement for what, where we are with machine learning and, and artificial intelligence is really beyond the scope. I actually uh, worked on artificial intelligence uh, 20 years ago out at Los Alamos National Laboratory. And I decided not to pursue it as a career. And the reason was I, I didn't really feel like it, we were getting to the intelligence part. It was a lot of computation. And now we're getting to where we really can be intelligent. I'm going to share some of that with you today and talk to you about how you bring that onto your team. So when you search for artificial intelligence on Google, what you get is a lot about robots. And that's how we think. We personify both machine learning and artificial intelligence as people or robots. But the reality is what artificial intelligence is is this other search, which is algorithms. So we don't generally think about the algorithms. We start thinking about the, someone brought up, I think Emmett brought up Terminator. We think about some of the evil robots. Hopefully we think about some of the good ones too. But what I'm really going to talk to you today about is more those algorithms and the importance of those algorithms and how you think about those algorithms and their intelligence can come onto your team. So Ram Charan, who's one of our best uh, management uh, gurus today, said that algorithms are the singest, single greatest instrument of change for us. So think about that. This is the power that you have in your hand. And it's all about helping people increase their capability and capacity for making decisions. And this is where the intelligence part comes in. So how can you successfully onboard that ghost in the machine? The thing that isn't personified that we normally think about, but that algorithm that's in the back helping us increase our capacity and our capability for decision making. Well, let's start with what we're doing now. And like I said, when I was out at Los Alamos, I decided not to go ahead and pursue a career in artificial intelligence. And the reason why is a lot like there's an old New Yorker, New Yorker cartoon. And in that cartoon, a policeman walks up to a drunk who's looking underneath a street light. And the policeman says, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm looking for my keys. He said, oh, did you lose your keys here? He said, no, I lost them about two blocks away, but the light's better here. So that's what's happened, in my opinion. I'm a mathematician, so I can point the finger at myself. So I, mathematicians, physicists, and computer scientists have, have been the people who have controlled artificial intelligence for the 25 years, the past 25 years, and really since the 60s. And the reason for that is artificial intelligence has taken a lot of data and a lot of compute power. And they were the people that were in control of and had access to both of those things. That's changed. That's when people ask me what's changed in AI, that is absolutely the two key things that have changed that's made this possible. It's the vast amounts of data that has been available now via all the sensors that we have, the internet, everything, and the commoditization of compute power. So that's the difference. That's why we can change. What we need more of is neuroscientists. So I actually joined a company, Neurologix is uh, neuroscience-based AI, really on how we know that the brain is working and helping us to get to that cognitive computing. But we need people that are product owners, that are taking, not just saying, oh, well, you know, our engineers said we use this algorithm and it's fine. It can't be a black box. So we need people that are getting into this. We need people that are in, in information architecture and UX. We need people that are thinking about business problems where we need more intelligence and we need the funding. We also need ethicists involved in AI. We need social scientists and we even need lawyers. I'm not gonna belabor this. The bigger point is we need all of you. We need all of you to join us in what's going to happen with AI because it's going to change our future. So my action one for you on how to onboard the ghost in the machine is be a hands-on manager. Start learning about AI. Start getting involved in this. Start asking the questions. Don't leave it to the engineers, who I love, and again, I was one of. Don't leave it to just them. This is going to take all of us. My action two is for you to remember, robots are the extroverts. Algorithms are the introverts. 
Okay, so when we think of things like self-driving cars, we think of the car, we don't think of the algorithm inside of it. And there was this great study done at Stanford, and they were trying to use a robot to encourage people to throw trash away more. And what they ended up saying with this is the bigger lesson from their experience was that robots need some way to um, uh, interpret human behavior and social cues. And their point was, actually what they learned is, the robot, the robot, in order to get trash, it didn't need to just be present, it didn't need to be by their table when they, when they made their trash, it needed to have some personality. So they actually found, even with this you know, same ugly trash can, if the trash can just wiggled, it would get more trash, <laughs> okay? So remember that. Algorithms, this algorithm of being smart about where to be when they were c making their trash and starting to leave, that doesn't matter. It needed that wiggle to get people to really interact with it. So my action number two for you is to really design the full experience. Don't just think of that optimization about where the trash can needs to be, but think about the wiggle you need to get people to integrate with it, to, uh, to interact with it, sorry. The next thing is um, AI isn't rocket science. Um, rocket science is actually very simple, and I know we have that as, you know, the bar is rocket science. But rocket science is actually pretty simple and basic. Space program execution is very, very hard. So what do you do with a space program execution? You go step by step. You know, we've got to learn how we launch a rocket. We've got to learn how to land people safely. We've got to learn how to land the rocket on the moon, which is different from landing it on the Earth. But you go by a step by step. So think of this as a space-wise execution towards your big vision. And you need to do this, start small. Start to where you can actually understand it, you can grasp all that you need to in order to uh, get to that ultimate vision of yours. The next thing is beware of um, Kasparov's mistake. So a lot of people don't know this, but when Kasparov lost to Big Blue, he lost to Big Blue because of a bug in the algorithm. And interestingly enough, that bug didn't make a really smart move. It made a random move. He was trying to figure out, wait a second, this machine knows more than I do. Why does it know more than I do? What is it? And he got so distracted believing that the machine was right and it knew better than him and it knew why to make that. It wasn't. It was a randomly chosen move that caused him to lose the whole game. So really expect bugs. Don't say, well, the machine knows. It knows better than me. It can compute more than me. That's not actually the case. So you need to understand what's going on and give it that guidance and learn, okay, is this right or not? How can we double check this? What else can we look at? The last one is the funniest one. So don't underestimate the complexity of what you're doing. So you all might know the Roomba. What you might not know is that still to this day, at least two calls a day, Roomba gets a call that says, the Roomba just smeared poop all across my house. Now think about that for a minute, right? Poop is pretty easy to spot. It's usually maybe heat sensing. There's something about the smell. If we have a tiny speck of it on our shoes, we generally smell it, right? So understanding and, and detecting poop seems like a pretty easy problem. But it's not. It's actually a very complex problem. And so the point is, don't underestimate the complexity of poop and don't spread it around the house. <laughs> Bring in the experts. There are people that know a lot about um, AI and ML. We shouldn't be just grabbing routines um, and using them and saying, okay, well, that's what the machine said, here we are. It's really important that you bring in the experts. And yes, it's self-serving because we are experts in this, but make sure you vet the people that are doing your AI, that are doing your ML, 
and get involved and engaged in understanding what they're doing. So I've given you five tips for onboarding the ghost. I hope that it helps you. If you need any help, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to talk to people about this subject because I am actually passionate, and I think now is the time for us. So I hope you have a great conference. I hope you continue to learn things and enjoy. Take care. <laughs>